Hello there and thank you for logging on. This series of slides provides an introduction into what electronic conspicuity is and how it's used in the UK. It also shows why Pilot Aware is the fastest growing electronic conspicuity device for general aviation and when using Pilot Aware how you will see more aircraft than any other system available. In the United Kingdom, the Civil Aviation Authority produces an excellent book called The Skyway Code. In the section on avoiding collisions, they bring to our attention that in most years there is at least one mid-air collision and that more than a hundred very near misses are reported to the Airprox Board. In The Skyway Code, they correctly recommend that all pilots should spend 75% of their time looking out of the cockpit for other aircraft using their preferred visual scan. Other techniques to maintain good situational awareness include maintaining contact with air traffic control, avoiding airspace choke points caused by adjoining controlled airspace, avoiding en route airfields and glider launching sites, and using non-standard cruising altitudes to avoid other aircraft. And importantly, make full use of your Mode S or Mode C transponder. They also point out that it is the law that if you have a working transponder, you must use it. And of course, they recommend the use of an electronic conspicuity device. So what other electronic conspicuity devices are available apart from Pilot Aware? There are, of course, the air to ground transponders that we use to let air traffic control know our position when we're in the controlled airspace and also as a general target when we're outside. These are known as Mode C or Mode S transponders, and they work on the legacy 1090 megahertz aviation frequency, which has been used for over 70 years. This system has served us well, but the modulation technique used has its limitations, and it can suffer from frequency overload if the density of aircraft gets too large in a specific area. It also needs very expensive secondary surveillance radar to work. Mode C and Mode S transponders don't communicate with each other in the air, so they can't be considered as a two-way electronic conspicuity device. A modern development of Mode S is the Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast System, or ADSB. ADSB is automatic in that it doesn't require secondary surveillance radar to transmit, which it does every second or so. It also includes a GPS receiver, so a more accurate position in time and space is transmitted. ADSB also uses the aviation frequency, so also can contribute to the frequency overload at 1090 MHz. In 2016, the Civil Aviation Authority introduced the CAP 1391 specification. This was for a low-cost, low-power ADSB transceiver. The devices transmit and receive ADSB in and ADSB out and are approved for use only in the UK. Finally, FLAM was developed primarily for gliding use, but a power FLAM version is also available for general aviation aircraft. FLAM uses predictive algorithms to determine if a collision is likely to happen. This is most useful when thermaling with multiple other gliders. Pilot Aware is unique as the only device that can detect all of these electronic conspicuity types and plot them on an in-flight screen or tablet or flight bag. The attached chart shows the usage of electronic conspicuity devices by GA aircraft in the UK. There are approximately 19,500 airframes in the UK, excluding foot-launched aircraft and balloons. And as can be seen, the majority of the aircraft have Mode S installed, followed by FLAM, Pilot Aware, Mode C, and then ADSB. This results in about 20% of all airframes having no electronic conspicuity at all. As the various EC devices have been designed for different uses and operate on different frequencies, the trick is to get as much interoperability as possible. Pilot Aware has gone further than any other device to achieve this. Like all modern systems, Pilot Aware uses a GPS for accurate positioning and also provides voice and audio alerts to the pilot through a tablet, screen or flight bag. And uniquely in Europe, 
Pilot Aware uses a ground station network to provide information on all those aircraft that it cannot see directly. Here are the aircraft that Pilot Aware will detect directly with no ground station involvement. Firstly, Pilot Aware will see all Pilot Aware equipped aircraft and they will see you. This will be as a target with a GPS location, just like any modern system. Secondly, Pilot Aware will see all aircraft transmitting ADSB out. This will also be as a target with a GPS location that can be plotted on a screen or flight bag. The ADSB equipped aircraft will not detect you. Thirdly, Pilot Aware will detect all Mode C and Mode S equipped aircraft. The information received will not include GPS coordinates as none are transmitted, but it will provide height and a relative distance based on the rate of change of the signal power received. This will then be shown as a bearingless target on the flight bag or screen. The Mode S and Mode C target in this instance will not see you. So already, without the use of any pilot aware ground infrastructure, we can already detect 60% of the aircraft transmitting an electronic conspicuity signal in the UK. 60% wasn't enough for pilot aware supporters. And following a tragic mid-air collision between a glider and a light aircraft, they wanted to see FLAM equipped aircraft as well. So to do this, pilot aware uses a network of ground stations to detect glider locations transmitted on one frequency and rebroadcast their position to pilot aware users on the other. Now, all pilot aware equipped aircraft can detect all FLAM equipped aircraft when they're in range of one or more pilot aware atom grid ground stations. This has been very successful. So, with the help of the atom grid infrastructure, Pilot Aware can detect 85% of all aircraft transmitting an AC signal. But that was still not good enough for us. The real prize would be how to detect the 60% of aircraft that already have a MODIS transponder and present them as a target with a GPS location, just like ADSB. That was a real engineering challenge. But with the help of the Atom Grid ground station, it's now been done. How then do we now see all Mode S transmitting aircraft as a target with a GPS bearing when they have no GPS on board? The process is more fully documented on the Pilot Aware website, but in brief, it goes like this. A Pilot Aware equipped aircraft detects a Mode S equipped aircraft as it did in stage one. The information received includes the aircraft's unique ICAO code. The ground station continuously uploads the latitude and longitude of all Mode S transponders detected in the vicinity. On the onboard computer on Pilot Aware, searches for an ICAO match and the GPS coordinate is then known. The multilateration data to make all this available is provided by 360 Radar Limited. Now, all aircraft detected can be plotted in flight on the Pilot Aware virtual radar screen, available on any smart device such as an iPhone or a tablet, and no in-flight web access is required. On the virtual radar screen, MODES detected aircraft are accompanied with a circle of ambiguity which grows with time. The refresh rate is an average between two to 12 seconds. If the delay is longer than this, then the indicator reverts to a bearingless target. To achieve this unique ability to show Mode S aircraft in 3D, Pilot Aware, like TISB in USA, uses multilateration, commonly referred to as triangulation, to determine exactly where the aircraft is. This provides a near real time position. Multilateration is very accurate and is used by the majority of national service providers across Europe. However, when using multilateration, there are three parameters that we must consider. Firstly, the latency or the delay in getting the position through the system. Secondly, the accuracy of the position of the target. And thirdly, the refresh rate 
or the time to the next report. Pilot Aware has gathered significant information on these parameters, which we are pleased to say are within expectations. Firstly, latency. This is good with 86% of all responses being available within three seconds and a full 99% being available within five seconds. Secondly, there is the accuracy. Again, multilateration gives a very good performance, with 86% having a positional accuracy within the length of three football pitches and a full 99% with an accuracy of seven football pitches. Thirdly, the refresh rate. The refresh rate shows 81% of signals being refreshed within 10 seconds. This is also good, but we're working on reducing this as low as possible. The near real-time rather than real-time nature of multilateration should always be considered when using the system. This slide shows the location of the current Atom ground stations connected to the Pilot Aware grid. There are currently 178 stations connected in the UK and Europe. All stations are connected via an encrypted network for safety and the provision of a full network management suite. Automatic software updates across the whole network are implemented when required. The power of the Pilot Aware Atom Grid software also allows the uplink of data to all aircraft as well as positional information. The latest revision of Pilot Aware software will include the uplink of area Q&H and weather data via regular METAR updates. The low traffic shown on the virtual radar screen reflects the low level of traffic flying during the necessary lockdown of UK activities during the COVID-19 pandemic. And what about the future? Pilot Aware has produced a small 32 gram data receiver called Graffiti. Graffiti contains all the Pilot Aware transmission and reception capabilities to talk to all of the Pilot Aware units. Graffiti now brings all of the Pilot Aware functionality to drones, foot launched aircraft and other light aircraft. And of course, it will be in continuous contact with the Atom Grid network so that all information can be provided by data uplink. The future opportunity is tremendous. Well that's all for now so thank you for listening and if you want to know more or buy any of our Pilot Aware products please visit our website at pilotaware.com or email us at support at pilotaware.com.